Mm -hmm. Welcome to Torsta, I'm Pino Gris. Today we're talking about mass shootings and mass transit, I guess. Let's go! Whoa. There's something very strange about guns in the United States. Um, the United States culture is getting very, very, I think, religious in a way that doesn't involve God, but still involves like the cult practices. And the main theory on that is that there's two religions uh, that are competing with each other right now to be, I guess what I call America. And um, one of those is very aligned with guns. And that comes from in the United States uh, Constitution. Now that I think about it, we should have like Kempo Kinemi in in the United States as well. Maybe people would learn a little bit more because most people only know the First Amendment because they get a big mouth and then they go, it's a free country, I freedom of speech. And then the Second Amendment and they say, I can have guns. And um, that's, it's not, the Second Amendment is something like uh, a well-regulated militia being necessary no, well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of the state, the right of the people to bear arms, shall not be infringed. And so, the like the common understanding is that the, the operating part of that is the right to bear arms shall not be infringed. But there, uh, the other opinion is that um the the right or sorry the the what is that called the right to bear arms is a uh an appositive describing um a well-regulated militia small nose dinger so that the main the main sentence is a well-regulated militia shall not be infringed and that's like the big debate that's kind of going on. Well, it's, uh, I do that every time. Um, that's like one of the big talks that's happening amongst the people who can talk, not the people who just shout, we need gun control, my gun control is my finger, that kind of thing. So, uh, as far as the shootings go, I, I think it speaks to there is like a huge amount of mental illness in the United States that the society itself is on the verge of psychosis. Like it's just sort of its normal state. And they don't really understand that because of the uh, way that mental illness is in a large part generated by culture. I mean like what you consider to be mentally ill and what you consider to just be sort of normal is a lot determined by your society and culture. So, we're in the city now. Um, but like every time I hear like about something terrible happening at the school or something, there's a, a nasty amoral part of me that goes, yeah, I can feel it. <laughs> like maladapted and not healthy and really bad but at the same time I get, I get what you were advocating for which is that American schools are awful um, I saw really awful things working in schools a little bit when I was in uni and then um, I mean basically child abuse and then uh, probably experienced some of that abuse as a young schuler as well and um I'm sure that it's only gotten worse. So to me, it's no wonder that people are going crazy and shooting things. I'm actually surprised there's not a little bit more of it, especially around uh, the awful American medical insurance system. There's a small chance we'll fall into the ocean on this bridge, but I'm going to give it all it's got. Fifth gear, max revs, 300 kilometers an hour. I think it's like 160 miles. 
do you remember the first impression of your gun experience? Oh, yeah, my first, uh, the first time I shot a gun, I was very, very young. I had only just recently learned to read, and I could only barely speak English, which is not so different to now. And I shot at a picture of Santa Claus. And um, he uh, had just come out of the shower because he was drying his head there with a towel. And I don't know why there was a picture of Santa Claus and a towel, but I could very barely sound out the very strange words at the bottom of the target. Um, wow, that was exciting. And those words were shoot a hola in the Ayatollah. What kind of gun did you shoot uh, the first time? Uh, I that was a uh, twenty-two caliber long rifle pistol. Um, so it's a very, very small bullet. Something you could give to a child if you were the sort of person who gives guns to children. Um, I didn't even have the strength to to use the um, action on my own. I could barely hold the gun. But I've uh, had pretty positive experiences with guns since then. Um, I've shot a fair number of pistols, I've shot some rifles and shotguns, and uh, some machine guns. It's kind of fun. Have you ever shot them? Mostly recoil, and it gives me the fizz. Uh, guns guns are like race cars in that they are a machine that is built to do something and built to do only that thing and do it very very well so in that way they uh, tickle all of my German urges <laughs> for <laughs> machining and noise and stuff like that um, I never shot the gun mm -hmm. so how did you feel? I'm amazed you you live you lived in uh, Australia and never uh, shot a gun. Unfortunately <laughs> not. Um, I felt... Uh, well, the first time when I was a child, I was pretty scared of it, to be honest with you. Um, it, even the small twenty two makes a fair lot of noise. Um, not long after that, I saw a uh, thirty caliber rifle get fired and I basically dropped dead. Uh, it's not until in my adulthood that I was a little bit more comfortable, well, like adolescence, with uh, with these sorts of things. But now, but, um, how often mm -hmm. do you shoot gun? Oh, almost never. It's stupid expensive. I don't. I don't uh, own any guns. Um, but it wouldn't be responsible for me to have one because I couldn't keep it safe and um, and so I'd have to like uh, purchase uh, a rental gun and then ammunition is very very expensive now in part because of the panic and bizarre behavior of those uh, gun loving people those are the same people who uh, kind of hate transit. Ah, I'm gonna get into that. <laughs> nice segue, maybe. Um, like, uh, I don't... The, the sort of, like, ability of Americans to do public projects, to work together in a public sphere, I think is very degraded. And that's what we see, uh... I think that's part of what comes out in these big mass killings. Because um, those people are normally involved with some kind of public project, be it learning or work or something like that, and it drives them nuts. So I don't have high hopes for mass transit in the United States. So that means people are like different classes of people exist uh, the people who use transit are very typically you know poor um, or don't have any other choice 
because they live in a city and then they have uh, they have to use a car. Um, and then depending on where you live in the United States, that can be very dangerous for you. Um, I don't think uh, I don't think buses and trains and things are dangerous because there are unknown people on them. I think they're dangerous because in a lot of parts of the United States, if you are ever late to work or have troubles being there on time, um, they'll fire you. And I was waiting for the bus and the bus was in a car accident or something, or the, uh, I'm sorry, not in a car accident, but delayed by a car accident or something like that. They just don't care. You're not, you're not important. Um, so, and then just practically speaking, United States cities are not designed for it. Like we could do buses out into the um out into like the suburbs and stuff like that but those are very specifically designed to be separated and isolated from you know compartmentalized away from things and so um basically it, it destroys the bus system what the bus system would need i think or a train system so it would be very inefficient to wind down all of these small curvy roads that come up in the United States type city um, that were made for like suburbs and stuff like that. So to have a properly functioning transit system, the entire way United States cities has built have been built needs to change. And you know that's not really just going to happen. <laughs> So I don't have high hopes for either United States gun culture or United States um, United States mass transit. If you could do anything, how would you deal with guns? Um. I would dissolve all human subjectivity and render people into the base void, uh, or violently render them into the base void of their existence. If I could do anything. But you know, that's not uh, always the most practical thing. As far as guns in the United States go, um, I think the chauvinism around them really sort of needs to go. Um, but that chauvinism is in a large part reactionary, and so I think the position that's against them also needs to change greatly. I would change those two things. Okay. Oh. Well, I hope that, uh, that talk wasn't too spicy for anyone, and, uh, my driving's not getting better while I'm talking, so thank you for watching. We will see you next time. I really hope that I can do a game video next time. That's my goal. So I'll make that promise to you. Next time, it's a game video. Goodbye. See you next time. Ah! <laughs> Distracted driver Pinot Gris causes car accident late on the highway. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please give us a comment and subscribe our channel. See you in next video!